All right, so I got a great question on Quora uh, yesterday, and it's a site I actually like using. I like answering people's questions. It's something I do just to, I enjoy it, okay? It's, I enjoy answering questions on Quora. And someone asked um, if um, you can contribute to your child's Roth IRA. And really good question. So short answer, yes. Long answer, as follows. First off, in order to contribute to anyone's IRA, they have to be working. <clears throat> so you have to have earned income to put money into an IRA in your name. So if you want to contribute, if your child wants to do an IRA, they have to be working. Here's the good part though. There's no rule, it's not a 401k. It doesn't have to, the actual money earned from the job doesn't have to go into the IRA. So let's just, as an example, let's say you're your son works all summer and earns the three thousand dollars, and um, and you know so you can put three thousand dollars into an IRA. But let's say your son spends all that three thousand dollars; it's gone. Can you give your son, gift your son three thousand dollars to put into his IRA? Yes, yes, you can. So um, that was the answer to that question, and that's one of the little catches. As long as they're working. Now, here's some pros and cons that might be helpful to you. Number one. You know, if you're, this is an opportunity, especially with a Roth IRA, because as chances are, if they earn that little bit of income, there's really going to be no tax. They're going to be earning under the amount of the, of the standard deduction. Um, for the most part, they're not really paying any tax. And um, so when you put money into a Roth, you, as opposed to a traditional IRA, you don't need that deduction. So the Roth is, is clearly the way to go if you're going to do this. But number two, if they're putting money into a Roth every year, let's just say, let's make it even. Let's say it is $5,000. You're generous. Oh, let's make it $2,000. It'll be reasonable. They're 15 years old. And you do this high school, college. Let's say you do this for them for five years or so. You put $2,000 a year in. They have $10,000. And that's growing. It's growing tax-free. The other nice thing is, is they're 20. They, you've put in $10,000 by the time they're 20. 25, money's still growing. 28, they decide to buy a condo. Um, they could actually use the principal, the contributions, the $10,000 from the Roth, remove that tax-free for the down payment. So it's also a versatile account. So not only is it a, a, a nice idea, it gives you some tax savings, it's also versatile. You could, you don't have to take it out for a down payment, just saying the opportunity is there. And you get that first time home buyer exemption, which some of you may be familiar with, where you can take out $10,000 of earnings to purchase your first home without penalty. So the contributions, that first $10,000 is gonna come out with no tax, no penalty, it's just a return of cost basis. But then you can take out $10,000 out of any IRA for the first time home purchase. So that's very helpful too. Another benefit is, <clears throat> is that if you're doing this for them, or even if they're doing it, let's let, let's take it out. Let's say they're no longer a dependent. They're now working on their own, but they're not making a ton of money. Let's say they're starting off in a career. And we get some clients doing this. You know, their, their children are, are early on in the career, educated, they're working hard, just but in their particular fields, the first few years of work are not high paying. So in this case, if your income is low enough, and you contribute to a retirement account, you get a savers credit. So let's say in the same, let's say in this case, you're still, you know, you're, you're let's say your son is working, earning, let's say a low amount of money, um, but um, is eligible to do a Roth IRA, but just can't put his own money in, doesn't have enough money right now to do it. You still, let's say you give $2,000 they can put the $2,000 into the IRA and they could potentially get a tax credit on those contributions. It's called the savers credit and it's a sort of a, a low income and, and the credit's as high as it goes up to 50%. So depending on the income, a $2,000 contribution could yield a $1,000 tax credit. That could probably wipe out their entire tax bill. As a side um, note here, I, I really like the idea that as long as your family's not completely screwed up, of planning from an entire family perspective, you know, um, you know, not thinking of just individually, here's us, here's our children, here's our grandchildren, here's our parents, whatever. 
but thinking intergenerationally here of how you can maximize your family's well-being. And this is a way to do that. You know, instead of if you can instead of just giving your kids some cash, if you fund their Roth IRA and their income is low enough, you might be able to increase that gift from the government with something like the tax savers credit. And that's really thinking intergenerationally. That's really thinking about maximizing your whole family's well-being. You know, let's say you're relatively young parents, you're helping your kids. 20 years from now, they're doing very well um, and they can take care of you. I mean, it really, this is the way it's supposed to be, I think. Some of you may not be in the situation. I apologize if it's not you and I, f I feel sorry if you don't um, have that close of a family. But ideally, I would like to get families more thinking this way about maximizing their family wealth. So you get the savers credit. So we talked about it. The child's accumulating money for retirement tax-free is potentially has flexibility there for things like a down payment on a house or education. Um, you are getting, um, you know, this tax credit. So they're getting, they're growing their money. They're, they're getting a t potentially a tax credit depending on their income level. Uh, you're able to give some money to your kids and, and then with the tax credit, possibly paying off more, you're doing some intergenerationally, you're moving money around the family that optimizes it for the entire family. I mean, that $2,000 in your bank account is just worth 2,000 bucks. In your son's Roth IRA, it's growing plus potentially a $1,000 tax credit. So you've already made 50%. So what are the cons? I mean, obviously, uh, one of the other people who answered this particular core question, which I'll, you know, I'll link in the, in the video, is that they, you know, they said they put some money in a fund for their daughter, and then when they grew up, as soon as they turned 21, they he told her about it, and she spent it all. And yeah, I've, I've seen that happen. You know, it, it absolutely happens. Um, you could put some rules to tell your kids, hey, you know what? This is for long term. Please don't touch it. Um, I think if you're doing this type of stuff, getting your kids saving, and you, you get them involved in the process, hopefully they won't turn 21 and just think about blowing all the money. You know what I mean? Hopefully you've talked to them about that, get them involved in their long term growth. But you know, having kids myself. I also know there are just certain things that are personality based. It's not just what you teach them and tell them. I mean, some people, you know, they're, they're, they're just, you know, maybe they need to learn a certain different way. You can tell them, hey, let's let's accumulate. Let's do stuff for the future. And they just want to go out and have a good time. And uh, whatever and it could be, whatever the motivations are psychologically there, um, some of that seems to be genetic and the way they, way they were born. So I understand that. But so that's one of the one of the downsides, potential downsides, is giving them money. They could cash it out, and uh, but let's not look at the negative here. Let's look at the positive. I mean, what if your kid doesn't screw up? What if your kid is into saving and such? And just think of the advantage that that you've given um, you know given your children. To, if you if you can do this for them, think of the advantage that that does. Um, in particular situations, even if you're not wealthy, but let's say you get an inheritance from your parents that, you know, it's, you know uh, grandparent passes away and, you, you know, what do you do with the money? Do you just give the kids some cash, you know, hey, go have a good time? I mean, this is a way to possibly really maximize um, that cash is thing or doing things like, you know, funding um, children's uh, Roth IRAs, again, if they're working and have earned income, but doing stuff like that. So. That's one of the situations that this could pop up for any family, not just, you know, wealthy people who can afford to throw an extra couple thousand dollars a year at each child in their IRA, uh, et cetera. But I mean, I think there's just such a lesson here, lots of benefits to them, to the family. And if we just make the assumption that your kids are going to be pretty good about it, um, then and if we make that assumption, let's make that assumption then you do it. Of course, there's a chance they're going to spend it or do something stupid, but let's not plan everything around that. And let's teach them all the way through growing up how, you know, how good it can be. I and mean, maybe show them on paper, you know, how they can, you know, I mean, what do they want to be independent? They don't want to live in your basement or whatever. Let's show them how, you know, at, at age 28, if they're, you know, let's say they're 15 years old, show them how they get out of college, not even 28, let's say at 25, they're out of school, they have a chunk of savings for the long term. They have this uh, cash available to buy a condo. They'll be in good financial position. I mean, let's let's tell them that stuff. Get them thinking about that ahead of time, uh, so that um, you know, or, or buying an investment property or something. Tell them that. So if it you know comes down the line ten years later, they do spend it all. You did your best, but at least you came from from a positive angle. You tried to help and and you put them in good position. 
but chances are I think that most kids are going to do the right thing and realize you're accumulating some cash for them and they're not going to do that just do something stupid plus they realize by you helping them save they can you know if they need to focus their first paychecks on paying their own bills this is great at least they know okay mom and dad helped me out with savings I can you know pay my bills make sure I can get the proper health insurance through work or something not try to skimp here and there so just some thoughts on that but uh, child Roth IRA awesome idea um, and intergenerationally an awesome idea and for a lot of other reasons. So if you get any more questions on that, let me know. If you have um, anything specific, just ask me here, reach out to me, go to my uh, website, uh, um, any one of the three of them, um, you know, chrisgrandy.com, planwithchris.com, uh, walnuthilladvisors.com, and uh, we can talk about that. But um, Put, I'll put some links below, so don't worry about it. But if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe. I'd love to have subscribers. My goal, again, this channel is to provide um, some really good education to hopefully thousands of people. And maybe 25 of you eventually become clients. So I'll help uh, 20,000 people and 25 will become clients. Pretty good ratio for me. Um, we have a small firm. Can't help too many people long term, but... We find the right people to work with it'd be great so anyway like this video hopefully it helps you if he does like it share it and uh, feel free to leave a comment all right have a great day thanks for watching